Hello everybody, this is Bodrich and this is re-preview the new snap with Ulf and uh, in this video we will try to implement all of these functions the re-preview, the new and the Ulf function to our uh, snap script here so if I take a screenshot now full screen get a full screen screenshot, I can close this preview window get this mint menu, I select new, we just get error new so that's where we're at now we need to implement this uh, new function let's start with that and we can find this part of the script uh, it's somewhere here uh, we get the SXIV preview we close the preview, it will uh, open up this new action menu with save new, re-preview and ULF the save snap function, we have done that. Now let's do the error uh, or the new function here. Right now it just prints the error me message with the action which is new. So uh, to create a new screenshot uh, with this snap program, we could actually just write snap here. Since we have our uh, thing that we did in the last video with the uh, to, to kill all other instances of the same script this will kind of work uh, so we can take a full screen screenshot close that, select new we get the menu Th this kind of reloads the script and close any previous instances and we can select something doink, and we can do this forever and ever but there are some um, issues with this method of doing this one is uh, hard coding snap here is not the best ID because then we have to change this if, if we for some reason would rename the script or move it and it's not in our path and stuff so a more reliable way would be to use dollar zero actually so now uh, th th this will do the exact same thing here you can say select full screen close it select new we get the menu again full screen close it select new selection we can select this window and so on so it kind of works but the uh, one functionality that I would like here is uh, then we select new if we had a right now I, I, uh, I had a, um, a selection screenshot selection was the action I choose so when I select new here it would be nice if it just uh, if, if it skipped this first menu and and choose the same option again for us so to speak and to be able to do this, uh, we can just allow the main function here to take a command line argument uh, or uh, an argument. Uh, and if we pass an argument to, the, to this function, it will not uh, bring up the menu. Instead, it will use that argument uh, here and, and try to match it in this case clause. So we could write it like this uh, action is equal to dollar one if dollar one is not set then action is equal to the output of action menu so this should work now it will just uh, look like the same thing here now because we never pass an argument into this so new and selection we have to we get the menu again uh, but now we can actually execute snap here with the command line argument so for instance if i take this screenshot full screen oh, not that uh, argument and we can do snap screenshot full screen and you can see it, it immediately took a full screen screenshot for us uh, brought us to the preview we can close that and yeah so, so it skips the menu if it, if it have a have an argument and of course if we would give it some some weird argument here that is not in matching anything in this case for instance uh, screen only screen here no action selected aborting then it will uh, do the default action here which is the cancel function so we need to pass uh, an argument that matches this case here um, and what we select here will get stored in this action variable so we could uh, just add that to our new when we select new here we just pass in action choose selection, I select this sublime window, close it, I select new and now it should uh, immediately go into selection mode, right? No, no action selected, aborted, aborting and that is because we pass action here 
but this time action contains one of these actions, you know, save, new, re-preview and ulf, and uh, uh, to be more exact it contains the new uh, word here. So it doesn't work, we have to, either, we have to rename either this action or this action. Uh, let, let's rename this main action to, why not, main action. And then we pass main action and not action here as the argument. And now it should work. We can select selection. I can select this part of the file here. Close that. Select new. Now we are immediately in selection mode here. And the same thing would work with full screen. Close. New. It immediately takes a new full screen screenshot. Great. Um, and that is uh, the new function. The re-preview function is a bit trickier because what we want to do here is we close SXIV, uh, select re-preview, then we want to open SXIV again. So a good thing here would be to add this preview functionality to a function so we can call that. Then we also call that function here. here. So now we select main action, we execute this preview function, which brings up the preview, we close that, we continue down here to the post preview actions, we can select re preview, and here we, we execute preview uh, command again, or function again, and that will bring up the preview again. Full screen. Close it, select re-preview, we get, it opens the same preview again. If I close this now, nothing happens. And that is because now we close that and then it just exits the script. Because, look here now. Main action, preview. Shows us the preview, we close the preview, we are here in the script, it continues down here, do the this action menu. We select re-preview, we are now here in the script, and do the preview, close there, and then it continues down here, and ends the script. So what we want to do is, is after we close a preview, every time we close a preview, we want this uh, post, post view actions to appear every time. So we should move that into a function as well, post view. And we wanted the post view after each preview. So we call the post view function from the preview function here. So now we, we should be able to create an endless loop here of, of, of the script. Re preview, close, re preview, close, re preview, close. New, we get to, sele to select something else. We can select the uh, sublime window. Close, exit. And there, now we, we kind of have uh, the re-preview re function. Uh, but uh, the fun doesn't end here, you know, because if we want to do what I showed you in the last video, where I took a screenshot of a screenshot, kind of, you know. Uh, let's do a full screen screenshot. Then I open this uh, preview in full screen. I zoom in here and take a selection screenshot of this arrow here. It opens that in a preview, but now you can see here we, we have two snap previews here. Uh, and that's that that's really confusing. I think this is this belongs to the script. So if I close this window, we should get the menu, but this uh, snap window belongs to the old uh, snaps snap process that is killed uh, automatically by, by the script. So if I close this window, nothing happens. And this window brings up the menu. Do re preview and we see the arrow here. Um, so what we need to do is to close uh, the SXIV window before we uh, spawn a new one. And I'm thinking something like this. Uh, let's create a local variable here. We can call it uh, snap or preview ID. Preview ID 
will be the container ID of any existing snap preview window. So now we use i3 get here. Uh, instance snap preview. So this just as X2 tool searches for a window, but it will print the container ID of the window. But if it doesn't find it, then preview uh, ID here, that this variable will be empty. And I set this as a local variable, meaning this variable will only exist inside this function. And uh, when we exit the fun fun function here, then uh, uh, yeah, th this variable is clear, so to speak. So here we could test here uh, if uh, preview ID has a value, then we can do a notify send uh, SXID preview exists saved instance. Good, take a full screen screenshot. Zoom in a bit, take a selection screenshot, this part of this glitch lake, and there we can see SXIV preview exists, it tells us that. It didn't tell us that the first time uh, it opened the, the preview window there. And now uh, we can, if it exists, instead of notify send, we could do an i3 message. But instead of focus, we do kill, and instead of instance snap preview, we do we could do that also. But we we can. It's better to use the con ID here. Uh, preview ID kill. Uh, if you wanted to, yeah, maybe I I want to show you this. Uh, maybe it's it, it it's a bit stupid, but if you want to save a line. <laughs> You could do this. We could assign test and assign for this uh, variable on the same line by assigning it. Doing this, you know. So here it test is preview ID. Uh, does it contain a value? And preview, and then we we'll remove this part also. Preview ID will always be blank here. It will never contain a value. But then we do this. Uh, Thing, you know colon equals meaning we assign a, a, val a, a default value here to preview ID to the variable preview ID uh, and what we assign is the output of, of this command i3 get instance snap preview if that however is uh, um, if it doesn't find a window then preview ID will be empty and this test will be false and it will not do this part um, but if it's true, then we do this part. And now, since we assign this the content of, of i3 get here to preview ID, we can use that variable immediately here. We don't. We never have to uh, assign a value outside of this test. Can be good to know how this works. Uh, you might uh, stumble upon it sometimes. I don't know. I don't don't really recommend writing it. it, it it's easier to read the other other way around. But. Uh, can be good to know about this and sometimes it is actually quite convenient to use this. Um, I'm also thinking we could do something similar here um, where we folk where we X2 tool search sync here. That is what we see here by the way. This number here that is the output of that X2 tool command. It's the window ID of that window. And then this success colon true here that is from i3 message. Uh, we could make i3 message quiet by adding the Q flag here. But same thing here, we could use i3 get uh, directly here. Con ID is equal to the output of i3 get because i3 get also have a sync option, but it's spelled with a K because the author of i3 get is an idiot. Uh, double parenthesis there. So this should also work, and then we can remove this uh, extra tool command. Now, now we actually not only saving a line, we save a command here, in a way. But we add a command inside here, whatever. And we can remove this because now this is a single line. Let's also uh, 
add some space here. So now this this should work uh, and do the same thing. And now we will ensure that we only have one instance and we will focus that the new instance as soon as it appears. And now we can take uh, recursive screenshots. Full screen, zoom in, selection screenshot. Now we got this window. We don't got any other preview windows. We can close this, we can save it if we want to. Selected, and there we got our selected ping. And now we only have the ulf action left and that is super easy since we have already created the ulf script. All we have to do is do ulf temp file. Because that will upload the, the, the temp file, you know, that which is the screenshot file before we save it. So uh, we can take a selection screenshot of this case clause here because that can be good to have that online. Uh, close it, select Ulf, and there Ulf is uh, uploaded to this location. We can test that by opening uh, Vivaldi, hit capital P and it opens it automatically. And here we have that screenshot, it's online, it works. Uh, but sometimes, you know, uh, you want to both save and upload a file. Maybe you take a screenshot and oh, this is such a good screenshot. I will save this and, and look at it on, on rainy days, you know, but I also want to share it. So then maybe we should add an option for uh, Ulf and save or something. So this will both upload the file and uh, and ulf it but now we have a problem here or if we do this we don't have a problem if we do ulf temp file and then save snap this should work that, then it will upload the file when it's uploaded we will uh, uh, get the menu to, to save it but then we have to wait for it to get uploaded uh, it would be nice if we could upload it in the background. Meanwhile, we are uh, saving saving the, the screenshot. And we will probably be able to upload it before we have even specified a directory where we want to save it. But this uh, there is a problem with this because if we upload this file and manage to save it faster than it, we upload it, then we will actually move the file because that's the default action we have a... a added here to move temporary file to target but if we change this to copy instead and we can add a force flag here also uh, then we will always be able to use this temporary file and that's what we uploading and yeah so this should work and now we can take a new screenshot let's take a selection again and only of the ulf ulf and upload stuff here Close this, I select Ulf and save. I get to choose where to, and, and you can see it's already uploaded. I had, I couldn't even start typing it here. Where we save it as the default location. And now we have both uploaded and saved it. And we should have the link to the new uh, file or URL in our clipboard. We can open it there. It's online, it's here. Cool, huh? And there, I think this is good enough for, for now, for a while here in, in this Ulf script. I, I have uh, so, something really cool in the makings um, that I want to use here in, in the future, in, in our snap script. Uh, but uh, I need to work a bit on, the, on that function that I'm creating. It's, uh, it's a work in progress, but hopefully I'm done in, in, in a day or two with it. But I'm thinking maybe we should do a couple of Thunar videos here again because ev everyone has been asking me when when are you going to make more Thunar videos, Budrich? It's we we want more Thunar videos, and there are many more Thunar videos to make. Um, and I think we will do a couple ju just because I am so annoyed by by some things here. One thing in Thunar, I I don't know where this comes from, but by sometimes 
uh, this name field here, the column name, look, look how long it is. So you have to scroll when you want to sort by time or, or see the size and the time and stuff you have to sort. So that's something I really want to take care of just for, for, for my own, uh, own needs. So, so I think we'll make a video about that. And maybe, yeah, whatever. Thank you for watching. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.